Ladies and gentlemen, we're back in studio. It's episode 63 of season two of the Daily Mission Podcast. 63. You know who that reminds me of, Nate? That'd be Brad Marchand. Brad Marchand. And we, uh, we actually were at a barbecue yesterday. Got to chat with him for a few minutes. So uh, we were excited about that. And it was a good little day out there. Yeah, guys, an absolute wagon. Yeah, absolutely. We're on a lake uh, with our good friend. <clears throat> Drizzy B, Drake Batherson, and we, uh, yeah, we enjoyed the day on the lake. And uh, I will mention before we get into the pregame show, Nate, that this is brought to you by Manscaped, the best tools for your family jewels. Millions of people use it worldwide. It is the number one men's grooming kit on the planet. Go to t- go to manscaped.com, use code TDI for 50 per- 20% off and free shipping. Listen, you got to go use the code. Make sure you get everything groomed up. Get everything groomed up. It even comes with a nice complimentary pack of underwear. That's exactly what I'm currently does. wearing. Okay. So okay. if that tells you anything, folks. Yeah, no, they're, they're pretty comfy, man. They're good stuff. So yeah, yeah. They, there's there's a variety of different packages that you can get on Manscaped. So go check it out. Uh, but you know, the uh, the guns were blazing yesterday. You know, we had a nice lake day out with the boys. And, yeah. and man, we had a ton of fun. Yeah, it was a good day, man. So there's nothing better than getting a nice day lake lake sand oh man washer oh, toss going yeah. barbecues going yeah. i mean the, the toys on the lake it was uh it was a good time and yeah. uh some females in bikinis i mean you can't really beat it yeah a couple lake sprays from the uh sea dew yes yep. yeah yeah a lot of stuff dogs uh, running around oh for sure it was uh, a <laughs> tremendous time and and uh, but we're back in the studio nate and uh connor bedard i did want to mention connor bedard because obviously the world juniors are going on right now and we'll touch a bit about uh that in the hockey section in quarter three which i will i mean i will mention that Quarter one's NFL. Quarter two will be the MLB. The halftime show will be the playbook, a fan favorite. Uh, quarter three, we'll have a little bit of NHL, a little bit of NBA, and then we'll finish off in the golf scene with the FedEx playoffs going on. But Nate, continuing the pregame show, yeah, Connor Bedard's just been a t- on a tear, man. And this guy, every time I watch him, um, you know, he's dangerous. He He's looking to shoot the puck. He's a playmaker. He's got the full package. Like, he's maybe the best prospect we've seen in the in the last four or five years. Yeah, he's, he's ridiculously good. I mean, he's a little on the small side. Yep. But... Like he's he's a really talented player. Also, Mason McTavish, man, phenomenal. Like what a grab for Anaheim at three. Yeah, like he could have probably been first. Yeah, you know. Yeah. I mean, oh, I mean that's hard to say. I mean, Owen Powers. A- he's and the way I look at Mason McTavish right now is he's been on. But he played in the World Championships, played in the Olympics, played um, the World Juniors, played the World uh, Juniors prior ones, last one. So. I mean, he's had a lot of great hockey experience to get him poised for this, but he's on an absolute tear right now in the World Juniors. But uh, no, man, Mason McTavish, I mean, we talked about it, the Anaheim Ducks, and we'll get more into it, but they're going to be a great team in a they few are. years. They really are. I, I'm interested to see if he'll he'll play in the other World Juniors as well in, in Halifax, McTavish. Yeah. I don't know if he will. I feel like Probably he's not. NHL ready. Yeah. I think he'll be playing this year. I think he played 10, 12 games last year. Yeah, so he would have burned a year, so he'll, <clears throat> yeah. Be, yeah, so he'll be up. Yeah. Um, but uh, Connor Bedard, no, this guy's got to look out for, and you know he just turned seventeen, so maybe he's got a bit of growth. But you know, just in today's NHL, like he's got that wide set stance, and uh, if his lower body keep continued to grow, like he's got that big rear end, almost like not even close to as tall as Yager, but similar to that in those tight areas, he can kind of stick out his arse and yeah. and uh, kind of create a little bit more yeah. space. He also uses a really long stick, but. What a tremendous talent. We're excited about uh, Connor Bedard. What, and, the uh, team that gets first overall, man. They're fired you're up. set up. And even if you're second overall, you're, you're set too. Yep. You got Michkov. That's right. So you're, you're laughing this year. Unfortunate that we can't see him at the World Juniors, but I that's know. for another time. Yeah. Uh, Nate, I did want to talk about our Chalkboard app and, and for all the listeners to make sure that you've downloaded the Chalkboard app and you're talking sports in the Chalkboard because I was reading the horse betting. Yeah. Because uh, it's the Queen. What is it? The Queen's Gambit. Uh, no. Um, it's not the Queen's Gambit. Queen's Cup or uh, Queen's Gambit. No, it's a movie. Or, um, Shoot, it's something along those lines. Yeah. The final big race yeah, of horse I, racing. I, I, yeah, it's a Kentucky Derby, the yep. something else. And anyway. and, and then... We're not the most dialed in horse racing guys. We're not. So that's why we're on the Chalkboard app, <laughs> to listen to all of uh, the people in our community who talk about you know the horse racing and give out the best bets. The boys are dialed Dude, they were on a man. heater yeah, yesterday. Man, so I was like, I got to mention in the pregame show, like if you're looking for sports bets and, and you know you have a book open, make sure you're on the Chalkboard app and people are posting best bets all the time. Yep. Um, so make sure you get over there. It's but a place eight, to be. Yeah, it is. That's going to conclude the halftime show. Pre-game show. Pre-game show. Halftime show. Halftime show is going to be a heater, though. It's going to be an absolute heater. All right, moving to quarter one. Yeah. Episode, Brad Marshall, season two of the Daily Mission Podcast. We're talking NFL and Antonio Brown this week. As this guy starts to fade out of the NFL spotlight, as the fade off into the rap scene, into the hanging out with A-list celebrity scene, he comes back and he says, I don't regret throwing a brick through a UPS truck. I certainly don't uh, regret quitting halfway through the field and running around like a maniac. The only thing I regret from my NFL career is that I was unable to watch myself in person. Which has got to be one of the cockiest things I've ever heard said. He compared himself to the Beatles. Yes, he did. Uh, He compared himself to something else that was terrific. I can't remember what it is. 
But this man was not the Beatles of an NFL player. That's for sure. <laughs> this guy has the most self-confidence I've ever heard. He's a little delusional. I think he might be dealing with some mental illnesses, man. Like, I think just even, too, when he was on some of the podcasts that I've watched, like, I just don't know what if, if everything's there or if everything's fully healthy for a guy like Antonio Brown. But I know he's been talking to the Cowboys uh, for a potential return. But, I mean, usually, typically, the Patriots are usually the last straw. Like, if you've had some trouble, you're a good player. Bill Belichick will see if he can bring you in, and, and he... Obviously, uh, went to the Bucks and teamed up with Brady, and and, yeah. uh, and and as we saw his exit last year. But this, I mean, that statement was maybe the most outrageous thing I've seen in a long, long time. Oh, that's crazy. I th- I thought initially it was a fake tweet. Yep, I really, really did, and it's not. We we confirmed it. It's like he just threw this up. No, he it's crazy. He threw that out to the public, and yeah. he was looking to make a statement. It's ridiculous, man. Um, so Nate, we're done one week of, of preseason. preseason, and uh, we've seen uh, some guys, some young studs who are in the draft or in their second year. They've looked really good. I mean, we look at the the Titans and Malik Willis. We saw him for the first time at a Liberty, and he looked pretty good. Uh, Carson Wentz, your guy from the Commanders, went eleven for fourteen, so yeah. that's promising. I know, yeah. like he was efficient. He threw for about eighty yards. So Carson Wentz looked okay. Drew Locke balled out for Seattle. I know Seattle is set on Geno Smith. They're they're hoping Geno's just gonna be their guy but Drew Locke's gonna make it tough man like this guy I mean I know he got shit on a lot in Denver but he can ball sometimes and and he uh, he threw for a couple tutters and and looked really good Um, the biggest spotlight right now in the quarterback world is in the Pittsburgh Steelers world Mm -hmm. and Kenny Pickett yeah he looked okay looked really good yeah Yeah, 13 for 15 for two touchdowns I mean this guy he's got small hands which we know what that means but (laughs) he uh no he looked really good and um the, the biggest spot, Nate, that I wanted to talk about with you was, was Zach Wilson. So Zach Wilson throws five times. He throws an interception. He blows his knee out. He's going to be out for four weeks. Um, this guy can't catch a break, whether it's nailing milfs or throwing picks. I mean, he's good at both. Yeah, he certainly is. Um, you know, it's going to be interesting to see what ends up happening this year with old Zachy boy. I'm yep. going to be watching this guy maybe closer than I'm going to be watching Wentz. Yep. I'm just really excited to watch Zach Wilson. Yes. I mean, what was it last year? It was that four interception game or whatever it was where he yep. was just absolutely moonballing duck leg. <laughs> oh, yeah. And it was like, holy smoke, Zach. I know, man. So, I don't know. I, I kind of hope he does a little better. Like, just for, like, Jets fans, man. Like, yes. You know, like, let's... Let's do something there. That quarterback position in, in New York has been open. I mean, you think about the, the Sanchez days, but he wasn't, you know, Mark Sanchez wasn't certainly anyone to, you know, to, to talk about. Uh, he he wasn't going to win goat, the Super Bowl. Is he the GOAT Jets quarterback, though? No, no. Um, gosh, no. Uh, Dan Marino. No, Dan, was Dan Marino the Dolphins? Joe yeah, Naismith. Marino. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah. 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 Okay. Would well, be pardon Jets. me. Pardon uh, my I think, Anyway, Robert Adams is going to be listening to this right now, and, so, and he would have a long list of, <laughs> yes. of names for us. Yes, he would. Um, Trey Lance looked pretty good, too, for the 49ers. So they, their decision to kind of move on from Jimmy Garoppolo and go with Trey Lance is looking like it's going to be coming into fruition, and, and uh, he looked good. So the NFL preseason is alive and well. Uh, we'll continue to monitor injury, injuries, and, and fantasy drafts are going to be coming in the next couple weeks. So make sure you're on the Chalkboard app, and and uh, and I know uh, we'll uh, set up a Survivor League, and we'll get yep. everyone involved in the Survivor League, and, sure. and uh, it'll be good fun. Yeah, it's going to be a heater. I mean, we're looking at, we got the drafts coming up. They It's going to be soon, you know? Like, what's yeah. the latest you'd want to draft? Like, end of August? Really? Like, you want a, a week before yeah, the season? Exactly. So, or yeah. Roughly. So that's going to be coming up. And then yeah. you got the season starting September 8th. So we are in the, in the thick of it. We're trickling down, man. We're in almost, we're, we're getting there. A few weeks I was away. I going to say single digits, but that's just simply not correct. No, no. <laughs> but I uh, know we're excited for the NFL to start up, and we'll have a ton of content coming in the NFL this fall. So uh, keep following along. But Nate, that's going to conclude quarter one, season two, episode. Brad Marchand, we're moving into the MLB in quarter two, and we got to talk about Fernando Tatis Jr. because this guy is an absolute clown, man, dude. The Padres must be completely devastated. I mean, they paid this guy three hundred and forty million dollars. He what's he tear his shoulder? He's done for the year. Then he goes in the, in the off season. He's riding an ATV, breaks his wrist, done for a foreseeable future, and now is suspended eighty games for performance enhancing drugs. Man, it's so brutal. I'm just trying to think of what how many games are left. Like it's less than sixty, right? Oh man, yeah, he's yeah, done we're... for the year. Oh, dude, yeah, that's just so dust, man. Like these are the things. Like you stack up a squad. You know what I mean? Like they're going all in, and then you get this. Like this is the this is what can kill you, man. Yeah, you're full. You're fully thinking. A lot of the maneuvers that you're making in the deal is is that Fernando is going to be healthy and is going to be playing shortstop for you. But his GM came out and said, I mean, there's been a lot of immaturity that we've seen from Fernando, and and uh, obviously, I mean, 
this is going to be a lot of money um, gone to the wrong person if he doesn't really get things back on track. He's still young. I get that. But, I mean, those are some serious mistakes to make uh, in your first few years of a $340 million deal. And it's like he hasn't even really, like, played since he signed that contract. No, he hasn't. Like, you know, yeah. so it's like... Oh, man, it's tough because he's obviously a stick. Oh, yeah. You know, the guy gets the MLB cover and he's yep. like 22 years old. Yeah. It's like, holy smokes, dude. But Yeah, he uh, he might be on the uh, the X Games cover pretty soon. Uh, it's a shame because I was kind of like, I'm obviously like rooting for Soto and the boys. And like, yep. uh, you know, I, I would like to see them do well. So I guess I'm on the Trey Turner turn, train now. With the Dodgers. Yeah, with the Dodgers. Yeah. Because I ain't going for the damn Phillies. No, for sure. Harper can absolutely lick. <laughs> No, it's going to be interesting to see. Uh, but Nate, the, a team that we haven't really followed too much is the defending champion, the Braves. And they've looked really good, man. I mean, yep. if you think that uh, this team is not going to be able to make some noise come postseason time, I think they are, man. Yeah, I mean, they're you know? right there with the Mets. <coughs> I believe last time I looked, they were like five games back of the Mets. Yeah. Who are having a wagon of a season. Yes. Uh, for Mets, uh, you know, for how, how they usually do. So, I mean... I mean Dude, yeah, they're definitely flying under the radar. And it's crazy because, like, if you have a World Series champ that's going to fly under the radar, like... Yeah. I mean, we got a Cunha now, too. Oh, it's man. the odds these guys rip a back-to-backer. It would be amazing, man. It really would for the city of Atlanta. But, uh, Nate, just kind of updating the AL wildcards and NL wildcard races because uh, that's kind of what we'll be focused on in these next 50 games is the changes there because a lot of these first-place teams have really locked in their position just as long as there's no monumental collapses. Um, but the AL wild card is really going to be interesting. I mean, you got the Rays right there, the Jays are right there, the Orioles are right there. I mean, I think right now the the Jays, um, what is it, the Jays, Twins? It's the in right now. It's the yeah. Jays, Mariners, and Rays. Okay, so and then but right outside Baltimore, the Warriors half game back, half game back, and then you have the Twins one game back. Here, okay, so like that is going to be White Sox. I mean, the Red Sox like what we're, we've been saying like they're having just it's awful. How I mean, if they get hot a little bit, they're only four and a half out. Oh my goodness! So this know? this so race like, is wide open in the. AL. Yeah, so that's going to be an exciting stretch of baseball. You know, as the marathon winds down, as we get into that 50, 40, 30 game window, it's going to be really interesting to see which which these, which these of these teams rises to the top in the AAL. Um, it's going to be a little bit more compelling and captivating than I find the regular season in May. But yes. that's when baseball starts to heat up is, is the end of August, September, and September October. September baseball, man. Yep. Oh, fire me up, dude. Yeah. So we're excited about that. And then we look over to the NL, Nate. Yeah. Um, I know the Giants are six and a half games out. But there are three teams pretty solidified, right, right now? There are. Uh, they've got the Brewers right on their heels. The Brewers are outside looking in. They're one game back. Okay. Um, then you're looking at the Braves, obviously. They're five yep. and a half clear. Uh, the Phillies, yep. they're in there. They're still, what, five games back of the Braves for the first spot. Yep. And then you have the Padres. Okay. So, you know. The Padres. Yep. If only the Padres could somehow get their shortstop back. Yeah, get their shortstop back, and then somehow get thirty exhibition games played for Tatis, so we could play in the playoffs. Yeah, it's That'd just be, absolutely you know, outrageous. Too bad. So, uh, they didn't want to mention too. Aaron Judge hit the hundred uh, RBI uh, marker already. Uh, Forty six dingers. Forty six. Forty six home runs. Dingers. Ridiculous, man. Like your Don Alvarez, my absolute fire wagon of the week. Yeah. He uh he's in second place. He's got thirty one. Yeah. It's, Dude, it's outrageous, man. Do you think he'll be the MVP? Judge? Yeah. Man, you have to think. You'd like if he to. hits it, I feel like he's gonna get sixty. He's yeah. getting there. Yeah. If he gets sixty, you have to give it to him, no? Yeah, There's I there's been I would eight think. people to do it in MLB history. Yeah. I think it's like I think he's gonna get there. I think he is too. Yeah. And you know, it's like, yeah, we have Otani and stuff and whatever, but like 60 home runs. Yeah. Like, it's the same as last year, Vladdy. Like, Vladdy would have had it had he not... Otani had his absolute it. monster year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, so... No, I, I totally I agree. you got to give it to the judge. He's got to be the favorite right now. Absolutely. Um, all right, Nate, that's going to conclude the MLB. So we'll catch up and, and make sure we're, we're, you know, filling you in with all the headlines. But uh, right now, it's just going to be the wild cards and, and how those uh, series start to heat up. And some divisions will be racing. So we'll be following it and bringing it on the podcast. But, yeah. Nate, that'll conclude the MLB quarter two. We're moving into the halftime show, The Playbook. The Playbook. That's right, folks. We're bringing it back. And it's this be a heater. Playbook is sponsored by Shady Rays. These sunglasses are top-tier sunglasses. I mean, Nate and I were on the lake yesterday, both rocking our Shady Rays. I mean, the deal that they've given us are absolutely outrageous. Yes. It's Use code TDI50. You get 50% off, two pairs of sunglasses. I mean, the, the return policy is something like I've never seen before. I mean, you just request that they are broken or that you've lost them. They will send you another pair. Go check out these sunglasses. sunglasses. They are quality. And I know with sunglasses that, uh, you know, it's not always the, the, the type of 
of uh, product that you want to spend 500 600 because they do they they they're they're easily uh, misplaced and, and you break them so make sure you go check out shady rays online go check out shady rays for sure these things are they're like as you said they're top tier i mean yep. i had a guy thinking his ray bands were mine yesterday. yes so i mean if that tells you anything yeah so get yep. yourself a ship harris shady rays they're filthy absolutely nate halftime show do you want me to start off Sure. All right. Nate. The playbook. I'm fired up for this. So you you've been offered a hundred thousand dollars to try to break the water vehicle speed. Have you ever seen that when they're in those little boats and they're trying to go as fast as possible on water? No. What's your play? How how am I gonna do it? No, but like how are you gonna do it? And are you accepting the offer? So like these things, these speed boats are probably going. I don't know how, like, uh, they're fast. Yeah, they are. It's kind of sketchy. Even, like, a normal boat you get in sometimes, you're, yeah. like, somewhat uncomfortable. Someone I know. Someone flooring it. You're like, jeez. Damn, I know, like, man. This like, is really fast. I mean, I'm going to give it a go. I'm going to okay. stick a Ferrari engine in the girl. Yep. I'm going to flatline it. I'm just yep. going to go for it. Okay. Try to get a nice day on the lake where it's a little flat, so I'm not hitting a... Because I've seen people perish doing this. Oh, is that looking right? Looking for the record. Oh, yeah. They oh, flip and they... Shoot. Oh, yeah. We're looking... Yeah, I guess, yeah. eh? Like, even you look back, uh, RIP to, um, what is it, the Marlins uh, yeah. Fernandez, you yeah. know, like it, it happens. Like you capsize the boat. I mean, a hundred grand to give it a shot and maybe die. Yeah. It's probably not worth it. No, I was thinking you'd probably shut it down and watch. Yeah. It might be the move because like, holy smokes, dude. I don't know. But yeah, I probably, enough. I probably wouldn't give it a try. I'd probably, I'd probably need a million bucks at least to try it. For sure. I think to give it like a good solid effort where yep. I'm like, okay, I could potentially perish here. Yep. But even then a million bucks for death. Yeah. I don't know. It's tough. All right, your first one here, and we're going. We're we're gonna throw back here. This is going back to the the prior episode. There was a lot of Lance Armstrong chatter. Yes. So, Greg, you're held down on the pavement. You're completely held there, and you look and you see Lance Armstrong <laughs> coming, and you know what he's after. He's after those testicles, but you can't move. You see him coming when he rounds the corner. He's smirking at you right in the eyes. What's your play? Well, I'm squirming until I'm free. You're you're bolted to the pavement. Well, I'm having a conversation with him. Like, dude, listen. No, <laughs> like this can't happen, dude. <laughs> and this, are, these are gonna mismatch your body. Um, I just, I mean, that is just the most outrageous playbook I've ever heard, Nate. I mean, I don't. I mean, maybe you know what? I say screw it, and and I look for a a surgery later on. But dude, like, I mean, Lance Armstrong is yeah, what a grease ball. <laughs> <laughs> wow. All right, Nate. You're at a barbecue. Yeah. You're having a few drinks. Oh, Ovi walks in. Yeah. What's your play? Rip his pants off. No. No. <laughs> oh, man. Realistically, I, what's I, your play? My play? I. You know what? It's going to be so... It's going to be so brutal, man. I'm going to like... I'm I'm migrating my way to him as like, carefully as I can to not make it look like... I'm playing this so cool. I'm probably going up trying to introduce myself. I'm like, oh, Ale- o- Ovechkin? Okay. Sorry, I haven't, uh, haven't heard of you before. <laughs> I don't know. I'd, I'd just chat with him a little bit. It'd be interesting to hear. He'd For sure. be an absolute beauty. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. Getting a picture, though. Yo, get that's, a, that's and get him a drink. Hey, oh, yeah, get him a drink. Yeah. Get him a white Russian. Yeah. Talk it with him. 100%. He's absolutely filthy. Okay, Greg. You're backpacking in a foreign country. Yep. It's nighttime. Yep. It's dusk. You have just got out of, like, uh, you're, you're a little tipsy. You've had like two, two or three drinks, but it's like this weird, like foreign country drink. So you're feeling a little, you know, Wonky. you're okay, but yeah. you're, you're a little out of it. Anyway, you hear screeching tires. A van pulls up. Four masked men get out, hold a gun to you and say, get in the van. What is your play? I'm hopping in the van. We're going for a tour. And oh. obviously you're going to figure it out. But like until I will put up a fight, it, like say you get in the van, they start kind of like cuffing you up. Then I'm fighting. But yeah, yeah but like. I feel like getting in the van is going to be your downfall. So then. you just start to fight? Well, you, you probably get yeah. shot is the thing, right? It's yeah. Just, yeah. It's a tough one. I feel like if you get in that van, I've seen enough like horror. Uh, yeah, it's not good. Yeah, it's yeah, never the you've place. Like, fight. We're going for a drive. Yeah, it's you've like, got to. I'm f- dead. You've got to fight your way to not get in that van. Exactly. Yeah. I think that's And I don't do. know. If they're going to shoot you, they're going to shoot you. You know? Yeah, that's true. You know? And yeah, I don't the think. The mind's probably been made up. It's I like don't running. think everyone with a gun is intending to kill. No, there's a lot of people that are, they have the gun and they're, you know. If they're you, not pulling a trigger. Exactly. It's like, yeah. shoot me. Yeah. You know, sometimes if you get, like, exactly. it seems like if you get a little crazy with them. Yeah. They're like, okay, this isn't the guy. Yeah. Yeah. So. so you take off. Yeah. I'll, I'll be putting up a bit of a fight. All right, Nate, you're on American Idol. Yep. You're going out on stage to sing your song. You forget the lyrics. Oh, my God. What's your play? Oh, no. Oh, man. I don't even know what I would do. You'd be screwed. 
Oh, forget well, the lyrics, you're screwed. Do you would you have any like go to songs that could be like actually you know what we're gonna we're gonna go with this one, like a song I would just sing like yeah. off by heart. I, see the thing is like if I was I feel like I was going in singing like some original or some like yeah. song that's actually gonna like hit different to them. Yeah, the only songs I'm gonna be able like to like Matchbox Twenty Three like, AM. It's yeah. three AM. Yeah, I would know that one. Yeah, I, maybe like a Dua Lipa. Yeah, yeah, you know something yeah. like that. But those aren't gonna get the job done. No, you know you're not going to go up there, cover do a leap, and expect to get a get a deal. No, exactly, it's not going to happen. No. So. All right, last one for you, Greg. You walk into a bathroom and pass out. You wake up and you're in the first Saw movie. What is your play? Well, I'm listening to the instructions and going for it. I mean, typically you've got to sew out your eye and find a key behind it, and then that will plug into the bear trap that's wrapped around your head, and then <laughs> the gonna... first, the first one is that's pretty spot on, honestly. The bear trap and the eye; those yeah. are the two that stick out for sure. The first one is the two guys in the bathroom, just straight up chain though, and they got oh, remember yeah. they have the saw. Oh man, yeah, dude. Which would mind you be better than the eye one? Yes, that eye one is screwed up. I mean, that Saw franchise has got to be the most... That's a creepy franchise, man. That guy with the mask always coming up on the videos and giving them a uh, check in. Anyway, that's... You know what else is a really Have you seen the one, too, where the buddy has to dive into a uh, thing needles. of... Needles. Needles. That's number two, yeah. yeah. That same one, the guy's got to reach in a box, remember? Oh. And then the box doesn't come back out, and it like, oh, oh that's a girl or something, man. That is like... That's a tough one to watch. That's tough to even bring up on the Daily Intermission podcast. We apologize, folks. Yes, we For all the do. people who haven't watched the Saw franchises, it's not must-watch, but it is worth it. Everyone's maybe. seen them. Yeah, they have. They have to have. You know what another one is that you were bringing up that's a creepy? The Purge, man. Oh, yeah. That's some creepy stuff. That is, man. Oh, it's weird, man. Yeah. I don't like it. No, no I don't either. I don't like it at all. All right, Nate. That's going to conclude the halftime show of episode Brad Marchand season two. We're going to move into quarter three. We've got a little NHL and NBA talk and some major news in the NHL broke this year. And it's sad news for the, not sad news, but, you know, pretty brutal news for the Vegas Golden Knights is that Robin Leonard will be unable to play this season. He announced he won't be playing next year. So, I mean, this is this is kind of karma for saying smell you to the flower. Yeah, it is. I mean, last time I checked, Flurry's still playing. Yes. So... We'll see what happens here, but man, this is not good. Don't trade away your Vesna winning goalie. I just didn't. That Vesna year was so strange. Like, what was it? Grubauer, Flurry, and whoever ended up winning it. But they absolutely Grubauer got dished. Flurry yeah. got dished. Flurry got dished for nothing. Yeah. Anyway, it's just weird, man. I, I would have. I understand you get more lifespan out of Leonard. Yeah. But like, I just I'm taking Flurry as the goalie. No matter Flurry what. was your guy in the You're expansion in, in draft. Now. Flurry was your guy. He was the guy. He was the jersey that was selling. He it's was the first Vegas Golden. He night. was the guy. So like obviously the loyalty there was 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 minimal and well, it's the most cutthroat team in the history of sports. Yes, I it swear is. To God, and man. I'm not sure if it's going to be beneficial. So they're going to be rolling with uh, what is it? Logan Thompson. He played at the World Championships. Brassois and Brassois is dog. Yeah, for sure. So. Um, they're, yeah, they're screwed. They are, man. We'll see what happens with the uh, the Golden Knights, and we know what the goalie market's like right now. It's not uh, overly attractive, but uh, Max Pacioretty, who was traded to the Carolina Hurricanes, was training and tore his Achilles, so he'll be out for six months. Yep, that's tough uh, for not only Max, who's you know a good player, but seems to be always injured. But for the Carolina Hurricanes, who really do have a strong team, and he could be a nice addition for. Yeah, I mean that's a it's a long recovery in that too. I think the only bonus you have with playing hockey with your Achilles is that you have a boot. Yeah, that's the only thing. I mean, for if, sure. like, if it was football or something, forget yeah. about it. But, yeah, it's a full year. Yeah, but I, I like I figure he'll be back by you know playoff time for sure. For sure. For sure. So, yeah, nope. I mean it's tough, man. That's a, that sucks for him because he is man. He's a he's a shot on goal machine too. He just whips pucks. Man. Oh yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Golden Knights signed Nick Roy to a five-year deal. Solid defense. He's a def- uh, defenseman, right? Or is he a forward? I think Nicholas was the forward. Nicholas was the forward. Matt, is there? Matt Roy on LA, on LA is the, is the defenseman. Yeah. yeah, I apologize. So Nick uh, to a five-year deal. And the New York Rangers have announced that they will be giving Jacob Trouba the captaincy yep. moving forward. I mean, that guy was an absolute presence. There's no doubt about it. I mean, yep. he brings a nice physical brand. And honestly, I don't mind it. Like, I don't uh, obviously think Panarin is a Benajab. But those guys, you know, I mean, I think Trouba, you know, he's a nice guy to be wearing the C there. Well, Panarin came out too. Like a few years ago, and said he's like, no, I'm not like a captain. No, he's like, exactly. It's not yeah. like there's somebody else that's better for me. He's like, I'm Russian, man. Like yeah. I can't even like communicate as well as some guys could. For right? sure. So for sure. I also saw a press conference with Truba kind of getting announced, and he was kind of like dedicating a lot of it to his wife and the hard work she puts in. Yeah. She's like doing like 12 hour shifts, and then uh, that's awesome. Still making it the next day for the announcement, like at nine in the morning, and wow, he was tearing up a little bit. It was pretty. That's pretty cool, cool to watch. Yeah, yeah absolutely. So definitely a deserving guy there. 
Um, Daryl Katz, owner of the Edmonton Oilers, we talked about it a few episodes ago on the podcast. There was a, an issue there with uh, a potential hiring for sex of like $75,000 with an underage woman. That has been withdrawn. So I think what we learned here is if you get enough money, you can do a lot of shit. That's exactly what I was going to say. Yeah. It's like it's just withdrawn. It's like, well, this has clearly been paid off. Yeah. Like it's not like they came out and came up with it. And then no. we're like, you know what? Actually, never mind. Yeah. Some billionaire, he can... Yeah. He can dish off a few, uh, a nice price tag to, yeah. to swipe it under the rug, which, you know, is, is it happens, man. It does. It's just the way it is. Like, it, it's it is crazy. It's, it, it's too bad. It is, man. Yeah. And uh, Nate, just some NBA pointers. Uh, Amon Shumpert, uh, former Cleveland Cavalier, you'll remember him from the LeBron James days there. He was arrested with a sizable amount of marijuana. This is something that I don't understand. It's like, is people who have played, you know, athletics and have, you know, obviously made a lot of money, but you're not about the law. Like, you can't just you know, throw a huge bag of weed in and fly around. And, and uh, you know, it's just, it's a little unfortunate. I know he was arrested. He didn't do it in Russia. Very true. He was in prison, man. It's ridiculous. It is, man. Um, Magic Johnson has called for the entire NBA to retire Bill Russell's number. I like it. I do too. Przingis said, I'm not changing numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's fair enough. Porzingis is an absolute legend compared to Bill. Yeah, so you know, they're going to try to I'm retire six. I know in Boston will certainly be retired, but league wide, I mean, a league wide retirement's pretty heavy. It certainly is. Yeah. And what are the league wide re- like players? I would I, 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 Wayne Gretzky, obviously. Yes, ninety nine. Uh, um, but is there one in the NFL? I don't think. I think maybe twelve eventually. But I, th- I, th- yeah. I was just going to say that. I yeah. think for sure they. That's the, if that's not deserving of a yeah. league wide retirement, then, then nothing ever will be for sure. So probably Tom Brady retired, but who knows, man? It's a it's a big ask to retire one number. It is, um, so especially we'll, now. Yes, exactly. You know, like when Gretzky got retired, it was you know like what ninety nine, I guess. Yep. Right, when it was so uh, makes sense, I guess then it was a different time for sure, for sure. Uh-huh. But, uh, no, we'll see what happens in the NBA. The, the off-seasons are uh, obviously, well, I mean, you know, a few weeks' time, they'll be concluding, and we'll be getting into regular season stuff, which is crazy. But yeah. that's going to conclude quarter three. We're going to move into quarter four. We got a little bit of PGA talk. It is the playoffs. It's the FedEx Cup playoffs. And and we got a lot of guys in the mix, man. Cam Smith's right there. I mean, I think it would be the greasiest maneuver ever if Cam Smith wins the $18 million in the PGA Tour FedEx Cup and then goes to live for $100 million. Oh, it'd be it'd, crazy. It'd be slimy. Uh, you but, almost think if he does win, it's like, what's even the... You, you, Why would you, you go? Get 18 million you're set anyway, dude. Exactly. Just keep, you know, like. Uh, Will Zalatoris is right in the mix. Uh, Sam Burns is two back. Uh, Tony Finau's right there again for the yes. third week in a row, looking for his third start, third win. I mean, Straka. Yeah, Straka. Straka. Yeah, he'll, he's going to collapse. Well, no kidding. Yeah. Sung Jay's not far off either. Okay. So, I mean, there's some names there. It's going to be a fun Sunday. It is, man. There yeah. is. Uh, I just pulled up the leaderboard here, and I mean, we got, uh, you know, from 11 down from Cam Smith, minus 11. He's two back. Yep. Uh, you got Zalatoris all the way through till what you've got up to 17th is nine under. Yeah. So we've got a, a lot, lot of people of guys in the, mix. in the mix. For sure, for sure. And you did mention, so Ricky Fowler was the last guy in at the 125th rank, so he needed to finish in the top 10 to move on to next week. So he was 7 under, right yeah. in the mix. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, makes a 9 yes. on the 18th hole. There was a nice little back and forth on Twitter with mm-hmm. Justin Thomas and Ricky, but, I mean, making a 9 is always tough, man, especially when you're, you're right there in the mix, especially Ricky Fowler, who's just really grinding to get his game back. But... Those are some pro- positive strides, and Ricky will be back next year, man. Yeah, you'd have to reckon, right? Yeah. At some point. Scotty Scheffler absolutely screwed me on a best bet. I had him as a top 10 finish, and honestly, man, I think I still would give that out as a good bet. He's had such a great year. Yeah. Finished minus one, missed the cut on the number. Like, Scotty just obviously didn't have a good week. I'll think I'll be back on that next week because he's going to be looking for that. And another thing with Scotty Scheffler is he walked right through Cam Smith's line on day one just yeah. without any care in the world. Yeah, no, that, that was kind of... Money, I guess. I don't know. I thought it was kind of weird too, because it's like, well, Cam's now minus eleven. You're gone's out. Yeah, yeah. So it's like nice walk. Cam minus nine. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cam. Yeah. Eleven. Oh, is he? Yeah. Is he leading? No. Uh, no. Fourteen. No. Thirteen. It's okay. Spawn. Oh, JJ Spawn. Yeah. yeah. And, then, on and then second the is uh, Straka. Okay. Yeah. He's at twelve. So, I think. so Cam's right there, man. Yeah. Uh, the BMW next week's the top seventy players in the FedEx Cup will move on to round two of the playoffs. We'll be giving out our best bets, and we'll be following quite closely. Um, with that, but uh, Nate, we'll move into fire wagon and dog water. My dog water of the week is Antonio Brown. I mean, what a clown! What a clown statement just to release that to the public. It's just complete dog water, and that guy needs a bowl of dog water to figure it out. 
it would appear so. But yeah, that is tough, man. That's just some attention grabbing headlines. Yes. That's all it is. Yep. Uh, my dog water. <clears throat> I'm gonna roll with uh, Scotty Scheffler. Actually. Okay. Um, I don't know. I didn't really love the line walking. It's just. I don't know. I'm yep. just, I like Cam Smith so much that yep. it's just like, all right, buddy. But like, I like Scheffler too. So, I, you know, yep. it's just a one, one little thing. I think it might've been a mistake. He just doesn't really cross me as a guy that would do that intentionally. Like, I just don't yeah, know I, if he knew. I know what you mean. And then too, people yeah. blew it out of perspective. For sure. Right? For sure. Uh, but, but uh, you know, my he definitely f- doesn't seem like that. No, no, he's a super nice guy. He is. He's, he is. Yeah. You saw that he's still driving that same vehicle that he's had. He's got 10 year old, like four door or something. And he just hasn't, hasn't bought anything new. That's so cool. Yeah. There's a, uh, well, I can't remember who it was. It was someone in the NFL did that too. They just didn't care. Yeah, and they were like, "Ah, oh, what a man! It's a car." Like, didn't Tom Brady drive something for a little bit, like an absolute shit box? Or maybe, um, maybe it wasn't him. I don't know. I can't remember who that was. I'm gonna have to look that up. Absolutely, but uh, my fire wagon of the week is Bill Belichick for calling out the New York Giants. So there's kind of an unwritten rule with defenses. Like, there's a certain amount of times you should be blitzing during these. They were blitzing, I guess, like three, four times of sear. Like they were just blitzing all game long, and he was rallied. He's like, "Well, like." What are you doing here, guys? Like so, like that for the listeners, like that's sending linebackers and or DBs at the quarterback from the line of scrimmage that aren't oftentimes calculated for blocks. And I mean, they were just sending blitzes all game, and it's just kind of unethical in the preseason. So he was yeah. rattled and he called them out. So my fire wagon is Bill Belichick for letting <laughs> people know, like, listen, this is still preseason. Cut, cut the shit. Yeah, let's take it absolutely down about yeah. seventeen notches, folks. Yeah. Uh, my fire wagon of the week is going to be the Pittsburgh Pirates and the Arizona Diamondbacks. Yes. Uh, these folks came out. They got my bets done for me. They're absolute beauties. They did not score a run in the first inning. And Huge. I will allow it. Huge. It was big. All right, folks, make sure you give this a five-star rating. Make sure you're following all the socials. The biggest ask of us is to download the Chalkboard app on your phone, join the Daily Intermission board, and come talk sports with us. We'll be in there regularly talking sports, so make sure you're on the Chalkboard app. You can link your sports book up, which we're working with in the back end to do, because that's going to be a lot of fun once we get it that done. Um, but uh, but we'll see you guys on Friday. And I'm just going to add in, too, on the chalkboard. I know sometimes you hear, you know, it's like, okay, there we got this app. It's like, I, am I going to download this random app? Like, th- I guarantee you, if you download this app, you're going to love this app. Yes. It is an awesome app. It's only growing. It's going to get huge. You just may as well join now because in the future, you're going to anyway. So yes. just get it done. Join our chalkboard. Let's feed. See you Friday.